Hello, we are here in Scotland on the occasion of the International Astronautical Congress 2008 and I have the pleasure to welcome here today Mr. Nader, uh, who is the manager of the Space Operation Division of EXA, which is the Equatorian Space Agency. And this is a big day today because the EXA has been accepted as a member of the International Space Federation. Um, so welcome Mr. Nader and uh, first I would like to ask you a few questions uh, about the mission of the Equatorial, Equatorian Space Agency. So for, I'll, I'll, if I do something Equatorial. wrong it's not a problem because yeah. I can record it okay. later, right? So don't be... Yeah, we are, yeah, we are, yeah. we're not, um, I understand. You're okay. Let me, okay, I have this at hand. So I think it's, uh, it's your turn now. Just a second. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to stop for a second. Okay, yeah. I'm recording. Mr. Nader, can you tell us what are the missions of the EXA? Uh, the EXA has um, the mission of um, making it real, the Equatorian Space Program, that calls for 10 years uh, for uh, peaceful exploration, of a space um, has to conduct research, scientific research in um, uh, earth sciences and plan planetary sciences and uh, space sciences. And maybe the most important mission of all, what EXA does has to give Ecuador the next generation of scientists, engineers, so they can bring a new era to us. We are pretty confident and we also know that this, the results of, of our work will not be seen by us, but for the next generations. But someone has to, has to start, and we have started. Can you come back on the brief history of EXA? What are your current activities? Yes, um, EXA was, was created on November 1, 2007. Um, it was an initiative um, both civilian and uh, from the state on the part of the Air Force, the Ecuadorian Air Force. Uh, at that time I was just completed uh, on Russia the uh, Advanced Suborbital Training Program and Ecuador didn't have an, an, an space agency so uh, the Air Force and the civilian sector are us, the state and the, and the people, let's say that way. Say okay let's put together uh, an organism, civilian, independent, not governmental, that can um, take this task on its hands and put it all over any political or uh, religion, uh, religious uh, beliefs, so we are completely neutral in everything. That's our, the guarantee that the program will be accomplished and our objectives will be uh, upheld, upheld on this. So EXA was born, um, we published the um, Ecuadorian Space Program, the C Ecuadorian Civilian Space Program. EXA is the Ecuadorian Civilian Space Agency. And we started two programs, two, two key projects. One was Project Daedalus. Project Daedalus was uh, the creation of the first Latin American zero-G plane. We created because we wanted to have the, this tool for um, upholding the, um, let's say, science in education. Not the education of science, science in education. We think that our country has a big problem that there is not enough science in the education. So we said, how can we really make the children um, get excited by science. That's sometimes difficult. So we came up with this idea. Let's make contests of science, but the prize will be a ride on a zero-g plane. So every children is going to say, I'm going for it. So we said, okay, we need a zero-g plane. We first tried to, to, to contact the zero-g corporation in the United States. But the cost was too high, 
So we said, okay, let's do our own surgery plan. The Air Force, uh, the high command of the Air Force said, okay, to a project. EXA had the technology and the knowledge to do it. So we've um, flown some missions on combat airplanes to perfect this device we, 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 we made, the, let's call it the gravimeter, a computer capable of tracing the per perfect par uh, parabola along with GPS and, and some other things. And when we had the equations, we just translated the equations for another plane, a bigger plane, a subliner that Air Force put it on uh, available to this project. So on May 6, we fly, uh, we flown the first mission. The mission was successful, and we had this this plane. Then on June 19, we established a record, uh, Guinness World Record the youngest human being to fly in zero G. And this is quite important. It was really important that what, where, uh, I mean, that should be a kid, a seven year old kid. Why? Because with that, we had to do a special training program, a special uh, zero G re uh, fly regime. If that what were to be successful, all the, I mean, the doors will be open for children. I mean, if we were able to fly safely a seven-year-old kid on zero G, that it is intensive, it is it's not for everyone. If we can make it for everyone, for every kid, then we, we will be opening the doors to all the kids, thus accomplishing the, one of our missions. And we did it. And uh, we have another project, of course, part all of the Ecuadorian Space Program. And uh, we're working to do it. Okay, thank you. And uh, looking into the future. Sorry, do you want to just <laughs> get very hot on the yeah. it's, it's trouble. Pretty hot. Yeah. And I need refrigeration. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. okay? Yeah, that's great. Okay. okay. Sure. And looking into the future, what are the undertakings that uh, EXA considers? I can tell you what is the plan. The, um, the program has three phases, suborbital, orbital, and lunar. And the suborbital phase, we plan to do some man and unmanned missions using commercial carriers. And that's the important thing. Ecuador is not a superpower. We don't have all the money. So with the new uh, um, era of, uh, that is coming with these commercial carriers, we plan to rent whole ships, put an astronaut there, put experiments from, not only from universities, but from, from schools. We need to give uh, access to space to them, but has to be free. For that to have to be free, the launch, the mission has to be cheap. And the only way to do it is with commercial carriers. So we have put this suborbital phase for this. I was trained to do that job um, as an advanced suborbital astronaut. That was my first aim on this. And then it goes the orbital phase when we plan to uh, do an orbit. I, I mean, a mission, an orbital mission. Put the first Aquarian satellite uh, in orbit. Uh, just today we have made a, a lot of important, very important contacts that will allow us to fulfill that mission. And on the lunar phase, we want to send uh, unmanned probes both to orbit and to land on the moon. Maybe you, you, we may call it impact on the moon with sensors. And um, there are a lot of projects going on that we can maybe join this project or come up with a new one. But the important thing is that Equar actually doesn't have launch capabilities. We rely on others. And uh, maybe that's why we wanted to join the IAF. Because this organization provides the, the best framework for cooperation. And our program is based on cooperation with other nations and other companies. Okay, and are there other ways that the IAF can help EXA to achieve those very ambitious goals and also to implement your current activities? We see AAF like a forum, like a big forum, 
where everyone comes to talk. And um, for our experience, we have, we have the motto, nothing is impossible. Because when we start to talk your plans with others, uh, you find coincidence, but you need a big firm for that. That's AAF. And we're sure that this big step in joining AAF will uh, account for much of the success we expect for the Aquarian Space Program. Thank you, Mr. Nader, and Thanks again, to welcome to the AAF. Thank you. Excellent.